Hi, I'm Andy, and uh, this video is um, uh, one of my first experiments into playing with the uh, Godot game engine, or sorry, that should be Godot game engine, I think it's pronounced, uh, which uh, I've been looking for a fun uh, way to write games that um, uh, gives you a graphical element as well as uh, a programming language. Uh, obviously, looking for something open source, it can build uh, games into all different things, including web, Android, uh, native on um, Mac and Windows and Linux. Um, so it looks worth exploring. Um, it has physics and stuff included. So this is a video about um, the a few things I learned when I was trying to get some basic kind of uh, rigid objects to move around with gravity um, uh, to make a game that's a, like a physics-based game where things can fall over and bash into each other and stuff like that. Uh, so I installed Godot um, from the Ubuntu Software Center onto my Ubuntu machine. Um, I'm going to make a new project. I'm going to call it, uh, I don't know, let's call it Basic Physics. Let's call it Things Falling Over. Um, I'm going to click Create Folder, and Create and Edit. And it's opened up a window, which I'll just put into the right place. Uh, so it starts. It always starts off in 3D mode. Uh, what I'm doing here is all 2D. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on 2D, and I'm going to stay in 2D mode. If it ever switches back to that 3D mode, that's because you've accidentally made a 3D version of a node. Um, uh, it, it just switches back to 3D mode. You have to switch back in and delete the node and make the one you meant to make, which was a 2D 2D one. That's one of the um, several things I've learned. Um, so uh, the way Godot works is that um, you're working on a scene. So I'm working on a scene which currently doesn't have a name. It's just called Empty. Um, and a scene is, is built out of a whole load of nodes. And nodes do different jobs. Um, but before we can do anything else, the scene has to have one node that everything else goes inside. So we click this plus button here under the word scene to make a node. And the type of node that I want to make in this case is just node. Like it, it doesn't have to be anything special, any of the specialized types just nodes. So I double clicked on that and now I've got one node um, here which everything else is going to go inside called node. I'm going to click on that a couple of times and I'm going to rename that to world because this is just the world that everything else lives in. Um, and all, all I'm going to do is I'm going to make, so, make a floor which has some objects um, that, that fall and bump into each other and things like that. So the first thing I'll do is just make a floor that they can all stand on. Um, so I'm going to click on world and then I'm going to click plus and that means make a new thing inside world and I'm going to look inside this node 2D stuff for the things I want and the thing that I want is a um, um, the thing that I want is a static let me type it in and search the thing that I want is a static um, 2D body because I want, um, yeah, the, the the floor isn't going to move, so it's static. That's what a static body is for. Things that aren't going to move. And I want I want the 2D version of it. Don't accidentally get the 3D one, like I was saying. Um, so that has made a thing, but it's made it up in the top left here. So um, so another thing that I've learned is don't move it yet. Leave it up there. So and we'll move it in a bit because the this whole shape here that you can see is where stuff in our world is going to be. It's not all going to be up in that top right. But just while we're making this shape, let's leave it in the top right because it makes it much simpler to edit that without accidentally getting things completely misaligned and no longer um, starting at zero, zero. So, because where it's appeared is at zero, zero, because that's in the top left in Godot as well as in a lot of other things. So, the way you move around is middle click and then drag. So, I'll just middle click, drag so that I'm looking at the middle where my new thing has been made. So, I've made this thing which is going to be a static body, but currently. Um, it hasn't. It, it's not anything. It, it, a static body isn't enough. That just tells it um, what kind of physics it's going to have. Um, but we need to ha um, tell it two things: one, what it's going to look like, and two, uh, how things are going to bump into it. So those are the two things we need. You can see there's a little yellow triangle here. That's telling me it's not really finished because we've made something that's supposed to interact in the physical world, um, but it hasn't got any way of telling it how to collide with stuff. That orange line you can see there doesn't isn't what how it actually you know what things crash into. We need to do that explicitly. So the warning is quite helpful here. It's telling you um, you're definitely not finished with this shape yet. You're just getting started. So we need to put some more nodes inside this node that we've made. First thing we'll do is click on it and click on it again and rename it to floor because that's what it's going to be. And then click on it 
Oh, not clicking on that. Could just select it and then click plus so that we've got some, we can add more things inside it. What we're going to add inside it is how do you want to collide with it and what is it going to look like? So first of all, we're going to go for a collision shape 2D. In fact, we're going to go for a collision polygon 2D. I had a lot of trouble. Collision shapes, so things like circles, um, rectangles and, and other things. When I went for shapes that were not just rectangles it, with a collision shape object, they didn't work. And I don't know why. Maybe I was doing something wrong or maybe there's a bug. But if I stick to collision polygon 2Ds for everything, um, uh, they seem to bump into each other in the way that I was expecting. So I'm going to leave it like that. So I'm going to double click on that. So now that this shape has got a collision polygon 2D inside it, but I haven't actually drawn the, the what shape I want it to be. So I'm going to draw right now. Um, actually, before I do that, I'm going to turn on the grid so that um, uh, things snap to a grid so they're not all messed up everywhere. I'm going to make the grid be 32 by 32 pixels. And I'm going to show the grid, which I do under View, Show Grid. So now I can see the grid that I'm working with. I'm going to draw this piece of floor um, by drawing the polygon. So that's basically as I when I created this collision polygon 2D, it was kind of already in a mode waiting for me to draw um, the polygon. I said I want a polygon, but it's saying, well, which polygon do you want? Well, you can immediately draw it after you've made it. So now I've made it. You can see now I've got a world, and inside that is a floor, and then part of the floor is this collision polygon 2D thing. Um, notice that the orange line is kind of not really important. The important thing is this um, this red shape. That's what things are actually going to bump into and uh, bounce off. So I've drawn it about that wide. I might want to make it bigger in a bit. Um, in fact, let me zoom out and make it a bit bigger now, because I think it's going to need to be wide enough to, for a few things to crash into it. I noticed that the grid doesn't appear to be working. That's because I haven't clicked on the Snap to Grid button. So if I click on the Snap to Grid button, now they really should. Yep, so they do. So I'll just make this floor nice and wide so that um, when I drop things on it, they won't fall off the edge unless I want them to. So that should be wide enough. So actually, just make sure it's in the middle. That would be easier to deal with. So yeah, um, that's, so that's all fine. We've got a floor. Things can bump into it, but we can't see it yet. So here, what you could do is add a sprite inside the floor and um, load in some graphics to um, to say what the floor looks like. Just for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to make a polygon uh, with just a color. Um, so I clicked on floor, and now I click plus. And if I choose a polygon, I guess for polygon, right? Polygon 2D, not the 3D one. Uh, and then again, I can, as soon as I've made that, I'm in the mode ready to draw it. So if I just click where I want it to be, I'm going to make it the, the it look exactly um, the the same as it as stuff bounces into it. So the the collision uh, polygon that I've drawn is exactly the same shape as the polygon I've seen I've created to make it look a certain way. Um, in a real game, quite often. Um, the graphics are, is just a, like a little bit bigger or maybe a slightly more complicated shape than the collision object. Um, so it's slightly forgiving if you um, you nearly bump into it, but it gives you a little bit of grace because the, the, the thing looks a little bit bigger than it really is. In this, I've made them exactly the same size because uh, it's going to look right when we um, drop things on it. Um, also, I'm going to change the color of this polygon to make it look a bit nice. Uh, what color should the floor be? Maybe a nice uh, pale blue color. That'll do me. Okay, and click away, put me back. So um, I've made my floor, and now it's finished being made. I'm going to click on floor, and I'm going to click this button, which means um, don't let me select any of the stuff inside, because if I start dragging now, I'll actually drag my polygon. So I'll just Control Z to put that back. I don't want to drag the polygon. I want the floor now to be finished. So if I just click on this um, thing, it kind of locks them all together so that um, nothing gets. Um, when I drag, everything gets dragged all at the same time. I put the floor down at the bottom. You can see here, this blue line, this shape here is basically the screen as it's going to be when I play my game, I think. Um, and I've made my floor. So let's make ourselves an object that's going to land on the floor. So I'll click on World. I'll click Plus again. And I'm going to make myself another... Um, um, what did I say it was? said it was a uh, yeah no uh, yeah so the previous one was a static um, body 2d but now I want a rigid body 2d because this one is not going to be static it's going to be able to move around 
So I look for a rigid body 2D, double click on that. I'm going to name this uh, square because I'm going to make it be a square. And again, it's giving me an exclamation mark to say you haven't got any collisions. So let's make a collision object inside it. So again, just the search box up there is very useful. There's a lot of different possible types of shape. So I've made a collision shape. Let's go back to where this object has appeared because it's at the origin. And let's just make this be. Now I've got to draw my shape. It doesn't seem to want to let me do that. Oh, I've chosen the wrong thing. You know, I was saying I wanted a collision polygon. I've accidentally chosen a collision shape. So let me just delete that and, and do what I said I would do. I used the delete key because I can't see anything. Thing. So select square again. And this time I'm going to do what I said I would do, which is a collision polygon 2D. Now that I've created that, I can click to actually draw what shape that polygon is going to be. It's going to be a square because that's what I said. And just like before, I'm also going to make a uh, polygon that is just um, so that you can see it. So this time I'm going to I'm going to draw that again. It's going to be the same, exactly the same size as the collision shape. And should we have that be white? Let's let that let that square be white, uh, and that'll do us. So um, I've finished with that. So again, click on the square, lock that all together so it doesn't get messed up. Zoom out a bit, which I use I do with the mouse wheel. And uh, I'm going to start with the square just somewhere above the floor. So hopefully it'll fall onto the floor when I start. Go back to the origin and make ourselves one more shape just to demonstrate. Um, I'm going to make another rigid body because this is going to move around. So rigid body 2D. This one I'm going to rename to triangle because I want it to be a uh, triangle. And uh, again, it's warning me it doesn't collide with anything because it's got no collision polygon. So let's make a collision polygon inside it. Collision polygon 2D. And zoom in a bit, and this time I'm going to draw it as a triangle. That's what I want it to be. So there's my triangle. And again, I'm going to draw, I'm going to have a polygon for how it looks. So another polygon 2D, and again, just draw it over the same shape as the collision. Uh, I better change the color of it, otherwise, we're going to get confused between these two. Let's have a nice red triangle. So I've made myself a floor and then two objects to bump into each other and, and bash around on the floor. Zoom out a bit. I'll put, uh, I'm going to lock, again, lock that triangle together so it doesn't get messed up when I drag it. Drag it around. I'll stick it underneath the square so you can see lot of things nicely bumping into each other. So, um, all these objects that I've created are, uh, ready made as physics objects, meaning that they're, they're going to work with physics and, and the default setup in Godot is that there's already gravity. So these things should fall down and bump into each other. Uh, it's not going to look quite right. I'm going to show you a few more things I learned about how to make it look nicer. First thing to do is save this scene. Um, your game can be made out of lots of scenes, but we're only making one scene for this. We'll just call it World. That's fine. And it can save it uh, where in its default place. And now let's try it out and see how our physics works so far. So I click on Go. Uh, and it tells me, although I've saved the scene, I haven't actually set this as the main scene of this project. So it's telling me I have to go to project settings and set that up as the main scene. So let's so just say select and it's asking me which scene do you want. I've only got one scene. There you go. So there's my game window opening up and you can see the square and the triangle did fall down and they did kind of move uh, in a reasonable way. Let's try that one more time. You can see they bump into each other, but they don't. It's not a very interesting interaction. So I want to show you a few more settings I set just to make things look a little bit nicer. But before I do that, let me show you one more thing to show you that there's real physics going on. If I drop this square, I'll turn the grid off. If I drop this square so that it's going to hit the edge of the floor and fall off, you'll see that it really does. That really does happen. So you can see it hits the edge, falls off down the thing. So there's real physics going on. Isn't that cool? We've done um, no code at all. We've already got some objects that fall and bump into each other. Let me just show you what I did to make it work a little bit more nicely, I thought, for how I wanted my objects to bump into each other. First of all, I'll click on the floor, and I'll look at this inspector, which changes the properties of this object. And I'm just going to change... You can see bounce here is set to zero, so they don't really bounce off each other. And I found if I set bounce to about 0 0.3, and if I did that for square as well, 0 0.3, and I did that for triangle as well, Set them all to 0 0.3. You can choose that some objects are bouncier than others if you want to. Um, I'll just save that again and run the program and let's have a good look at what happens. You can see they kind of bump and bounce off each other. Let's run that again with me out of the way. 
they kind of bump and bounce off each other in a way that I feel is much more satisfactory. Boing, donk. Uh, and that's it for um, uh, my first Godot video, uh, how to get some rigid objects um, falling under gravity, bouncing, bumping into each other with a static object that's the floor. Uh, a couple of rigid body objects that work under gravity and collide with each other. Um, the other thing I've been working on is being able to uh, grab these objects, pick them up, drag them around and drop them and things like that, and have them um, not be falling while you're dragging them, but then be falling again while you're not dragging them. That took a bit of code and quite a bit of fiddling, so I'll talk to you a little bit about what I uh, learned doing that. But that's for the next video, dragging and dropping rigid bodies. Uh, that's it for this video. Um, have a bit of fun, play around a bit with Godot. It can be frustrating. Um, uh, often just finding the right little setting like that, um, bounce setting, finding out the thing about how my polygon, uh, my, my collision shapes weren't right, but collision polygon 2Ds bounced off each other nicely. Um, it's frustrating, but then it's so rewarding when it works so quickly with no code at all. We've got, um, some, some objects moving in a really nice way that looks realistic. We've also um, got an export which I tried out, which um, create, uh, exports this project as a web page and also as a, a Linux executable. And you've also got Android executables in the, uh, for the other platforms. So once you've got this thing working, it's then going to work on all those platforms and look pretty similar on all of them. Um, although I think the physics simulation might be a bit slow in some web browsers, but I'll let you know more about that when I figure it out. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Um, and let me know if you uh, there's particular things you'd like me to figure out in Godot. I've got a couple of ideas for some little games uh, that I might write and might actually put out on Android if I think they're fun. Uh, but yeah, let me know in the comments if you've made a, a cool Godot project and see you next time.